Um, and so we can get started. Um, before we really get into stuff, I want to try to get, uh, you know, get a sense of what you, you guys, how you guys, where you guys stand on this topic in general. So, um, uh, raise your hand if you, if you play games with violence in them, just like in general. Okay, cool. So most people play games with violence in them. Does anybody avoid playing games that have violence or that you read are gonna have a lot of violence in them? Uh, let, actually, let me lower hands first so we can see. Um, am I allowed to do that? I guess I have to do it one by one. Okay. Um, let's try that again. Uh, raise your hand if you avoid games that you know are going to be extremely violent. Okay, so nobody avoids games that are violent. Okay, um, so that's good. That's we've got a good, we've got a good baseline. So let's talk a little bit about violence in video games and kind of the history behind it. Um, so again, a little content warning. Nothing super graphic. Um, but just, you know, discussing violence uh, as a, you know, as it is in video games. Um, so we're going to look back at the first uh, sort of example of a controversial uh, uh, video game that depicted violence. Um, typically, if you hear like, oh, violence in video games, you probably think about a modern game like uh, Grand Theft Auto or Dark Souls or Mortal Kombat, like these games that um, show a lot of blood and gore and allow you to, you know, do a lot of violent actions within the game. Um, but uh, games have always been criticized for their violent content, um, at, you know, sort of from the beginning when they first appeared as commercial products. Um, and we'll see this example where it's literally, we're just seeing, uh, you know, white and black uh, dots on a screen. So this is a game called Death Race from 1976. It was um, in a like a big arcade cabinet that actually had like much more graphic uh, um, drawings on it, although they were very cartoony. Um, but I'm just going to play a clip from this. Uh, and so this is the first game that basically had a lot of people writing, you know, this is bad. Um, there, you know, this violent game is going to encourage violence or whatever. Um, so let's watch a little clip of this. So yeah, compared to um, you know games that we might play today, it's it's a uh, it's pretty you know the graphics anyway are very uh, simple. So uh, it's more the content or the idea behind the content. Um, and in the sort of like conception of the game, the people running around are supposed to be like monsters and zombies, um, but they don't really look like monsters and zombies. They kind of just like look like people. And so that was part of. Uh, what was very controversial is that it was it you know is allowing uh, players to basically like hit and run uh, people in a in a car, um, and so this sort of created the first uh, like controversy around uh, violent video games. Um, but just like it does today, uh, all of the criticism of the game and the negative press actually increased the sales for the game. And this was back when you it was you weren't buying just like a cartridge to put in the console. You were buying like a whole cabinet. So it was more like arcades were buying um, you know copies of this this whole uh, game. Um, and this is a quote from a study about uh, video game violence, um, starting with this game Death Race. Um, it says public outrage not only fueled sales of the game, 
but made Exidy a household name, uh, but established a pattern by which controversial games receive a high levels of press attention, which in turn drives these games marketplace success. Um, and that's from an article that's linked in the bottom in the resources as well. It's a really good, uh, interesting sort of study of how the media treats violence in video games and how that actually drives um, sales for those games. So, uh, you know, you might have games that are purposefully violent to attract attention uh, in order to get, you know, more sales ultimately. Um, so, uh, stopping here for a minute, I just want to think about why um, do we think, and we'll think about other things that complicate this as well, but just in general, why do we think that video games include depictions of violence? Like, it, are they there for a reason? What's useful about them? Why do, why do game developers and game designers use violence in games? Um, does anybody have uh, thoughts on that? I think it could be good for like emotional shock. Like, sorry, can you say that again? It was a little distorted. Oh, uh, I think it could be good for like emotional moments or shocking moments. They want to elicit a feeling from the player. Yeah, so to create extreme emotions or like you know uh, more more engagement with the player. Um, other thoughts? Well, I suppose it could help some people let out their aggression. Okay. Helps people let out aggression. Um, what about like games as a medium? Are they more violent than other mediums? We're going to talk about that actually a little bit later, but um, I think it's related here. I doubt it. Okay. I think that it's pretty equal because there's like violent movies okay. and like there's also a lot of violent games, but there's also a lot of like friendly kid games too. Yeah. Right. So that's a good point. So not all games have depictions of violence. In fact, a lot of games, um, you know, are are designed for kids or uh, you know uh, other experiences. Um, any other thoughts? What about game mechanics? Is it is it easier to make a game where you shoot people than a game where you do something less violent? I actually think it's um, way easier to make a shooter game because I feel like um, for a more creative gameplay, like you have to think out of the box or do something more unique. Maybe. Mm -hmm. So it's just easier for that kind of simple gameplay that people are used to. Okay, so you think it's easier for a shooter to create like those complex dynamics that, that make the game fun? Yeah, I think so. Because like for like games that don't have violence for the gameplay, you have to think more creatively and how to engage a player, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. So you have to you have to think more about ways of getting the player to interact. Wait, say that again. I didn't hear. Um, you. Me or Jasmine? I'm talking about Jasmine. Oh, I'm just saying. Okay, that Jasmine, do you want to? Yeah, I'm just saying that. Um. Like for a, like if you're playing a game and there's like shooting gameplay, I feel like it's more easy for a player to get engaged that because it's, it's kind of familiar. But if you're trying to introduce a new type of gameplay that doesn't have violence, then it's gonna be harder to engage. With. So you have to think. Mm, not really, because like uh, you got a game called like Final Night Funkin' and that got like so many people playing that, and that's not really violent. It's a rhythm game. It's all about people's um, what they like about it. What seemed like what's their interest in part in that game? To be honest, I uh, well, I think, uh, Hakeem, you make a good point that there are different genres of games. But I think Jasmine's point isn't necessarily uh, they, like there are examples, of course, of games that don't use violence as their main mechanic. But I think the point that Jasmine is making is that because there are already 
popular violent games or pop let's talk about shooters because she was talking about shooters specifically um so we already know about you know first person shooters so if we make a game and it's a first person shooter we can already assume a, a certain level of familiarity uh among a certain set of players um and so we don't necessarily have to spend as much time introducing the mechanics so of course it's possible to uh uh introduce new mechanics but what we see in games is that they often borrow from the mechanics of games that came before them to make that sort of guidance process easier mm -hmm. i think i think video games containing violence is just because uh, it's a it, it, it's because it's a very easy to provide instant gratification with violence of course you get you okay. get satisfaction from helping people too of course for example if you play um for example the the game you played fallout when i play an rpg yeah. game where you have freedom of choice i'd like to be the good guy you know but still you yeah. play the game you kill people even though you do it good even even though you do good things you kill those uh, raiders those uh bandits right <laughs> uh I, I think I think um, violence in video game is not as a controversial as it needs okay. to be, because we some somehow um, a lot of people associate violence with the with e with evil. Like oh, yeah. if you have violence in video game, this is bad for people. I don't I don't necessarily I don't necessarily think that. Um, yeah, that's true. It's not my, really... my opinion. Yeah, my yeah, my opinion is that violence is, is just part of our DNA, sort of, and we need to hmm. be able to look at it like um, correctly, like accept it and deal with it, and and, and not like uh, suppress it, you know. And I think video game, long story short, is a good outlet. Yeah. For example, hunting as a sport, it's violent. I think that's more cruel yeah. than video game. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah, certainly. Um, great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I agree with them. Yeah. I agree. Um, yeah, I think. You... Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, I think it, it's a good point that. Uh, uh, they're in the games and we'll talk about this in, in a bit as well about how sometimes you can do violence in a way that's uh sort of like uh could be bad or good right like in in grand theft auto you can be doing things that are like illegal or criminal or whatever but in some games uh you know you're doing things that are uh, for the benefit of other people so um i think that that context can kind of change how we feel about it as well um, so that's that's good uh, start to discussion. Thanks, guys. Uh, no, we're gonna I was have a couple say more. That really and truly, the majority of all games in their story have like some sort some uh, form of conflict. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, that's basically what it is—just conflict. Right. Okay, that's a good point as well. Uh, good stories have conflict, and a lot of time, conflict involves uh, violence. violence. Yeah. Yeah. It's like now, like what they trying to like shut down uh, Rockstar Games again. So yeah, to to, to blame them. So uh, like, oh, like the cause of people doing all this stuff in the schools and stuff, they blaming them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> They're doing that again. So yeah, so. we're gonna look. We're gonna look next at a little bit of that history. So um, let's keep going, and then we'll we'll do some more discussion. Yeah, it's it. Columbine um, all over again. Yeah, yeah. So we are gonna keep talking about um, some of the history. So uh, you guys have probably heard of the ESRB, the Entertainment Software Rating Board, which uh, was created in 1994. Um, and it was created out of like a few different lawsuits that occurred and then a congressional review that was uh, that was enacted um, to kind of like examine uh, content in video games and how it affects uh, specifically children. I think the big worry for a lot of people is that children are being exposed um, to uh, violent or sexual content. And it's very similar to, um, I'll get you in just a second, Hakim. Uh, very similar to uh, 
parental advisory uh, stick stickers on CDs or records that you guys uh, might have seen that were introduced in the 90s. Um, and then also the Comics Code Authority uh, from a long time ago, from the 50s, when um, comics, comic books, uh, you know, first be get, got a rating system because of violence. Um, one thing that's a little bit different with the ESRB is it's actually run by the industry. So the industry sets their own standards. The government doesn't set a standard of like what's rated R, rated PG or whatever. Um, and so um, like discussion around whether um, whether that's like, you know, that's ethical for the is industry to set their own uh, standards when it comes to ratings and saying what game is suitable for, um, you know, a child versus an adult. Um, Hakem, did you have a, a question or a comment? Oh, yeah, about that. Right? Yeah, I've seen kids like playing Call of Duty and all that stuff. And like, it doesn't really matter anymore, to be honest. It's like, yeah, you got all these little kids playing all these other uh, infamature inf inf games, so. Yeah. What do you mean it doesn't matter? Like, the rating systems don't have an yeah, effect? It, it, yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, I yeah. still see kids over here playing, like, buying a Call of Duty and Grand Theft Auto. It doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> it, so, really, it really doesn't yeah, matter. The rating the system does not so, matter. They're just so easily yeah. accessible now that just about anyone can get their hands on any game. Yeah. Yeah. Especially like you can buy the games online, so what uh, they can't check you see you're a kid. That's impossible. So, right, you know, yeah. yeah the, when these restrictions were first enacted in the '90s, it was a lot easier to control these things. But as you guys are pointing out, these days, because most stuff is not, we're not going out to the store to buy physical copies of a game. It's much harder, first of all, to label this stuff. Like it's very easy to ignore ratings on like you know a. Uh, uh, so, uh, some at the beginning of a YouTube video or whatever it is. Um, but it's also, we don't really have the same mechanisms for enforcement. Um, so those are good, good points. Uh, gonna mute everybody again. Um, so, um, the ESRB came in reaction to games like Mortal Kombat and Doom, which had kind of introduced more graphic content. Um, you know, when we go back and look at those now, obviously they don't really seem uh, that bad because they don't seem very realistic. We're, we're used to these days, like such a higher level of, um, realism in games that the, the, that depiction of violence, uh, you know, feels different to us now than something like Doom does. But back at the time, because it was so new and that was like the most realistic thing that, that had been created versus, you know, Death Race and, uh, these other types of games. So, um, that was kind of like the first thing, um, that people were reacting to. Um, and somebody mentioned Columbine, and we we talked about that uh, Columbine game, um, but the Columbine uh, school shooting in 1999 was the first time that we had this like really big national conversation where uh, a lot of people were trying to sort of place the blame um, for the violence that happened there on video games. Um, and the government uh, commissioned a big report to say, to, to, to study this and what they found was actually that like some really small percentage of um, people who committed violence at that scale uh, were actually video game players. I think it was like 10% or something like that. So they weren't able to show that there was like a real relationship there. It was more of, uh, I guess, a coincidence that the, the two uh, kids uh, in Columbine were like big video game players. Um, so that, that was one of like the first big studies. There's been tons and study, tons of studies since then, and there still are lots of studies. Um, but we'll see that there are no studies that actually show this relationship between actual real world violence, like, uh, you know, school shootings or, uh, or gun violence or murder um, and uh, an enthusiasm for or playing violent video games. Um, so instead uh and you can kind of see why they would draw this conclusion you know if somebody's looking for somebody something to blame um for something really horrible and you see that they play a video game where they're walking around with you know pixel guns and shooting things you can see why they might make that connection um so i don't i don't necessarily think it's like a crazy conclusion to to come to um but it's a lot easier to blame video games than it is to to blame other factors like, you know, the fact that we have uh, easy access to guns in the U.S. or 
um, other, you know, social and political issues that maybe are more responsible or more closely correlated uh, with things like school shootings and and gun violence. Um, Hakem, do you still have your? Do you is your? Did you raise your hand again, or is it just still up? No, that was mine. Okay. Oh, no worries. Okay. Um, so, as I mentioned, uh, it, it turned out after, you know, years of study that video game play is not predictive of future gun violence, um, while other, there are other social factors that are strongly predictive of future gun violence. And we don't really have to go into it too much, but I found that this chart was, was a pretty uh, good summary where you see um, the uh, video game sales per capita on the left and the gun violence uh, uh, per capita on the right. And there's one big outlier um, on the right, which is the U.S., uh, but the U.S. is not an outlier uh, in terms of video game sales. So obviously this is just like one view of the data. You might, if you, if you looked into it more, you might find that like, oh, you know, South Korea spends more money on video games, but in fact, all of the video games they buy are actually soccer games, so it's not really a correlation. Um, but if we just look, you know, so, so, this this uh, this doesn't necessarily you know summarize the whole situation, but if we look at this, we can see that there isn't at least like a a direct correlation between video game play or video game popularity and gun homicides. Um, there obviously is one thing that kind of stands out with the U.S., which is the the sort of much larger uh, number of of gun violence in the U.S. as opposed to other countries. Um, did somebody have a question? Yeah, that was me. I said, well, you know what's the most violent game out there now? Smash Brothers. <laughs> I'm oh, really? ser- yeah, I'm being serious because, dude, that game will, like, bring the inner rage in you. It's, like, it's crazy. Like, certain fighting games will make you violent. Yeah, because like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy, man. Like, you have to see these people, like, I've been watching, like, reaction videos and stuff. Man, you have to see them play the game, right. like, or, like, on the live streams and stuff, man. It's crazy how they yeah. just rage and just break their controllers. It's, it's nuts. Yeah. I think that's a that's an interesting thing to think about. Uh, and we'll look at a little bit of this, but the the difference between like feelings of violence or uh, versus depictions of violence, like is is like really graphic gore worse than, you know, other types of aggression or other types of uh, feelings that we might have when we're playing video games. Um, yeah. So let's continue looking a little bit um, at this history. So uh, in 2005, there was uh, a bunch, of, a, a, a few more controversies specifically related to Grand Theft Auto. Um, and the first of its kind law was actually passed in California that uh, banned the sale of video games to people under the age of 18 and created a new rating system that was independent of the ESRB. So. Again, the ESRB, which was this industry uh, standard that was maintained by the industry, didn't have any like real legal standing. It was just kind of like a recommendation. Um, and following you know, further controversies, uh, that changed to where it now became like an actual legal standard with a different rating system. Um, and it wasn't everywhere. It started in California and it's, it spread a little bit, um, but it was never like you know, a federal law. Um, but that was quickly or relatively quickly struck down in 2011 in a different case uh, against that California law um, that basically said that because video games are protected under First Amendment rights, we can't make it illegal uh, for anyone to purchase a video game. Um, and that really, you know, kind of set the standard because that was a, I, I can't remember if that was a Supreme Court law or a California Supreme Court law, but that uh, kind of set the standard for the expectation. Um, or at least the legal uh, rules around games. So ratings still exist. And, you know, for example, like Steam can still ask you what your age is before you can buy a game, but it's not like a legally binding thing. They can't get in trouble if they sell, uh, you know, an a R-rated game. I know it's not R, but whatever the video game equivalent of R-rated is to somebody who's under 18. Um, so M-R-A. that... Le- Sorry, what was it? The ratings you're thinking of are M and AO. Right, AO. Yeah, that's right. Um, M and AO. So, uh, so again, those are those are kind of like the the R-rated version for video games. What does AO stand for? It's like adult. Adults only. Just, adults only. Right. 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 Okay. 
Um, so anyway, it's not, it's, it was a very short uh, sort of like period where that was part of the law, but it, it is no longer that way. Uh, Travis. Oh, uh, wait, what game actually got the AO rating? Which Most games actually got it? Stuff. Uh, sorry, Travis, was your question was which games have an AO rating? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I don't know. I guess Grand Theft Auto. Um, I think it's like games that are really violent. It's not like, uh, you know, it's not going to be like Fortnite or Call of Duty. I think like games with a lot of sexual content also will get an AO rating. Uh, Brian, is is a... but I think, no, Grand Theft Auto is rated M for Majority. I don't know why it's that game. Yeah. So one of the, so there's a Grand Theft Auto on this list. A lot of these games I haven't heard of. Some of them seem like kind of porny type games. Yeah, Playboy the Mansion is one of them. <laughs> I missed that game somehow. It actually seems more like sexual content that's on this list than violence. Yeah, AO games uh, like sex games. Okay. Yeah. Uh, especially, uh, especially Japanese games. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I, so, I mean, if you go uh, on Steam, to... right, you can actually buy all that yeah. stuff on Steam. It, it's uh, it, 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 there's like a check mark there, and like like uh, you can check it and you can buy all, all that stuff there. Okay, good to know. Uh, mm -hmm. So we kind of touched on this a little bit already, but uh, thinking about like different rating systems and these kinds of rules, I think it's worth considering whether. Uh, video games are more violent than other mediums like film or novels or comics. Um, and we do see, you know, of course there are films that are, uh, you know, that get become controversial because of uh, depictions of violence or, uh, you know, sex. Um, but, uh, you know, it seems to be that games are more policed. At least there's this idea that like kids play games and therefore we need to like protect the children or whatever. Um, but I think it is worth thinking about whether this is something that is real or if it's just, uh, you know, we associate games with kids. And so therefore we think that the violence stands out more. Um, anyway, any thoughts on that? Uh, oh, yeah, I, I was gonna say it's, it's not a developer responsibility. If your child look at that though, it's not their responsibility. It's yeah. really on the uh, parents, um, responsibility really. Cause like the game, or like like once they ship out the game and stuff, that's whoever buys it buys it. It's not their problem. Yeah. Um, I think that's yeah yeah I, I agree with that. Um, other thoughts on whether video games are more violent? We talked a little bit about how like video games have these conventions, like the first person shooter is a convention, um, and that's a convention that involves violence. It involves you know depicting guns and aiming guns at people and shooting guns. Um, and in some cases they're monsters or enemies, but in some cases they're, you know, literally if you're playing uh, Fortnite or um, uh, Overwatch or something like that, there's a, you know, there's a person who's playing, who's, you know, driving the other avatars on the screen. Um, and so does that make this violence different than if you're reading like, you know, a novel about a war or a novel about like a, um, you know, a detective novel or something like that. I just want to say that um, it's a really opinion based, but um, oh, if you if, if people really think mental health and culture and uh, mm -hmm. and just uh, like first remember like the like you said the e the easiness of getting a, getting a gun in U.S. If people really think these issues are more uh, are, are less are less harmful than video game, then uh, there is must be some kind of escape goals or like over here, like like you people really think that a kid who gets bullied in the school, uh, all uh, mm -hmm. so much and he ended up getting having a, a really bad depression, and having having a suicidal thoughts and having the su su suicidal thoughts that combined with. Um, 
like murdering a drive. If people really think that is less uh, harmful and less severe of an issue than playing a video game and uh, inspiring people pick up a gun and shoot up a school, and that I, I think there must be really uh, there must be some something wrong over here. Yeah, um, yeah, I think uh, you know I agree that uh, video games are often used as a scapegoat in that case, and we'll look yeah, at. There, I have a couple of slides that's on, on different studies. Yeah, they use uh, that a lot for escape goping. You know. Yeah. This is a long story short. It, it's not. It's not. It's not um, video game developers' fault to to make a game. Uh, that's violent. It is parents' responsibility mm -hmm. to raise your kid responsibly. Uh, yeah. So they become good. So they become somebody who doesn't pick up a gun and shoot up a school. Yeah, yeah I think that's, that's a good true. point. And we'll we'll talk a bit actually about like how to think about this from the developer point of view. So I think that'll be that'll be relevant for that as well. Um, any other thoughts on whether video games are more violent than other mediums? No, I honestly think it's equal across the board. Equal. But yeah, okay. on that topic, I do believe that video game is more quote-unquote violent than other um, media. Because here's the difference. There's a disconnection between books and uh, and, and, and movies. You're, you're always an mm -hmm. audience. You're observing whatever right. is happening. You're reading, yeah. you're recreating the scene in your, when you're reading, you're recreating the scene in your head. When you are watching movie, you you are looking at what's happening in front of the screen. But when you play a video game, a good game can really immerse you. You know, and yeah. you you sort of forget that you are there. For example, if you, I don't know if you guys play stuff like zombie shooter, for example, um, um, what is it? What is it called? It's been a long time since I had that. Um, Killing Floor. I love that game, and every time I play that, I got so mm -hmm. into it. You know. I I really feel like I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm a badass killing killing zombie left and right. So I do believe that. So yeah, I think that's it. It really provides a, a it, wait, connection. Uh, wait, you know, so I want to say on top of his stuff, it's like same thing with me. Like when I play like Destiny, man, I love the lore of Destiny, man. Like, yo, know, when they get hooked with the lore and playing the game, I get so immersed. I feel like I'm in the world. It's like yeah, it's really it's crazy how that feels. Yeah, so I think that's an interesting distinction between uh, novels or films or comics, things that we read and experience versus video games where we actually have an active role. We can interact and so we make choices and we, um, you know, we do the things that enact the violence in some cases. Um, Kevin, did you have a comment or a question? Um, uh, probably I think Cyberpunk is more a violent game, I think. Nah, man, that game is funny. No, Cyberpunk <laughs> is violent game. I, I haven't play played that game. It's, uh, it's not I've that seen... violent. It's comedy, but is that that funny? What I mean by comedy is like it's like it's not that bloody and stuff. Not really. No, uh, I can explain what it what 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 contains the game, but but I think it's violence. Just I would like to say that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I haven't played it yet. I've seen some videos of it. Um, definitely seems like. Uh, you know, obviously violence is a, is a component of it. And it's also a bit subjective, like how different people experience um, or what it, what seems violent to, to one person versus another. Oh, yeah. Um, With that game yes. is that they put uh, in the customization area where you can yeah. Have, um, customize. Yeah, yeah, that's, your, I yeah. Like to, yeah, that's I think like changing any towns in front of us. Is that like you can customize Sorry, what? your genital What? Gen yeah, you oh, say right, right, right. Yeah, genitals. Yeah, I heard about that. We'll, we maybe we'll talk about that another so, another time because it's not. That's for shock. Related, it's like it's right. like for shock value, really. They, they did that for shock yeah. value. Yeah, yeah, I think that you know that that maybe uh, you know if they can if they can generate controversy with things like that, it'll it'll get more people to pay attention to it. Uh, John, did you have a mm. comment? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add like. I feel like movies can be just as bad as games because with um, even though like video games are more involved since you're playing the character um, with movies like you can feel like oh you want to be like that certain character like there was an incident where um, 
uh, I think it was The Dark Knight, where someone wanted to be just like the Joker, and they shot up the movie theater. So I feel like movies can right, do in Colorado, thing. yeah. Yeah, movies can yeah. do the same exact thing as a video game can. Okay, yeah, I think that's an interesting um interesting point as well is that it's even if we're not involved it can still model behavior it can still we can still um influence in that way yeah um cool thanks guys another so thing, let's oh oh go ahead another thing i wanted to say is like for the violence in these like film novel comics you can't really affect it but since you're the player playing a game like not everyone wants to choose the most violent way to do something either depending on the game right like you can be less violent it's because it's player choice but yeah yeah like but yeah, a that's a good point. like dishonor yeah yeah or uh we were talking about fallout earlier you can make you know different moral decisions in fallout um, so let's look at a few more things, and then we'll have another uh, discussion at the end. I mean, every uh, game you play is going to have violence in it. It's going to have some form of conflict. I mean, you can't hide about that. Even, like, the most simplest game going to have, like, some form of conflict. Wait, yeah. even, uh, I think... even Guitar Hero? Because <laughs> that does <laughs> not have blood at all or action. I'm not really talking about that, but I know what you mean, but yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I think, you know, it's very easy, like even with the games that we're making in this class, like they're not very violent, but we are, ha there are parts of the game where you're, you know, killing enemies by jumping on them and stuff, and you can add blood to the drawings if you want. So um, it is kind of like when there's, when we want to create obstacles, when we want to create conflict, often that results in depictions of violence. Um, so let's look at a, a couple more things. So uh so as as i mentioned there's a lot of there was a lot of studies uh about whether uh video game play led to violence and there have been no studies that show that video game play leads to real world acts of violence or uh shootings or murder or anything like that um there is a lot of debate about what what effect video games do have on people psychologically um, there have been a lot of studies that show a link between video game play and higher levels of aggression, um, as well as depression and anxiety. Um, there are also a lot of studies that show that that's not the case or that are inconclusive. So um, there's a lot of debate around that. Um, I'll link to a, a few articles at the bottom if that's something that you're interested in learning more about. Um, there's not anything that's like super conclusive and there's there's a lot more, I would say, of like, there's some very good like reviews of the literature, but then there's also a lot of people who critique those reviews saying that, you know, this is biased one way or another. Um, so we don't really know there. I would say that even in an objective way, uh, if you look at all the literature, there is no like accepted fact. There's no there. There have been studies that say, oh, you know, if you play games and then we interview you about your attitudes, it shows that you're more aggressive. Um, there have been some studies like that, but there hasn't been any, uh, there isn't like consensus, right? There's no like among the psycho psychological community, there isn't really a consensus about like how do video games affect us or not, um, or affect kids or not. Um, so we can't really make conclusions about in including violence in video games as far as like how it affects the player because we really don't know at this point. Um, hey, Ken, yeah. Oh yeah, I was gonna say like there's like this one game called Undertale. If you go the genocide route, mm -hmm. it actually punishes you by going that way by killing. Yeah. You can kill like every single character in that game. Yeah, that's a really good example of uh, you know a way a way that a game can model uh, moral decisions. Yeah. Um, as opposed to what we expect, which is that they you know uh, model you know violent activities. Um, so that's a good example. Um, so just for context, 97% of children play video games, um, and it's estimated that over half of video games depict some form of violence. Um, there's a lot of things that say like the most popular video games are violent, but that's not actually true. If you look at like sales, uh, the highest selling games are things like uh, Minecraft, uh, Tetris, uh, Mario Kart. There are other violent games in there, like Call of Duty obviously is way up there as far as sales, but um there are other games that are you know soccer like other games that don't involve violence that are just as popular as some of the popular uh violent video games 
Um, and a couple other things that sort of like complicate this idea. Um, federal crime statistics suggest serious violent crimes among youths have decreased since 1996. So even as the sale and level of graphics and level of uh, playtime of video games has gone up and up and up, we've actually seen violent crime go down. So that would seem to suggest that there isn't like some sort of huge correlation between the two. Um, another thing that kind of complicates this is other biases. So there was an interesting study that showed when uh, sort of like evaluating uh, violent crimes, people are more likely to, uh, to suggest video games when they're talking about a white uh, criminal or a white perpetrator, as opposed to a black or African American uh, criminal or perpetrator, because of the racial stereotypes that we associate uh, video games with, you know, uh, I guess like n white nerdy people, and we associate violent crime with minorities or non white people. Um, so there are other biases that come in that complicate uh, what we normally see as this narrative of like a white uh, a, a white school shooter or white violent criminal being influenced by video games. Um, so there's a lot of things that sort of are interesting to think about. And there's been a lot of good studies that kind of complicate this idea about how violence in video games affects the players. Um, so uh, why are, 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 is violence so often depicted in video games? Um, we've talked a little bit about this. Uh, there's some suggestion that like, sort of like in horror movies that uh, having these violent experiences in video games is actually therapeutic for people. They can experience these heightened emotions in a safe space. Um, and so they can ex feel these extreme emotions or experience these things uh, without the consequences of the real world. And this can actually alleviate anxiety, uh, some studies have suggested. So that may, and we've kind of, there's a, a few people who mentioned stuff like that at the very beginning about why we want uh, violence in video games to uh, kind of experience these extreme emotions, um, to play out aggression, other things like this. So um, there actually have been some studies that show that, you know, there's some correlation there. Um, video games also with violence happen to do well in some cases um, but again as i mentioned they're not necessarily the most popular video games if you look at sales um, so some violent video games do sell really well others don't so that's not necessarily um, a major factor um, so then uh, one last quote before we uh, discuss this a bit more about from the developer point of view so uh, the creator of um, uh, the Atari system, where which Death Race was built for, uh, was not a fan of the Death Race game. And this is a quote from that article that I quoted earlier. They said, uh, we're really unhappy with that game, Death Race. We, uh, Atari, had an internal rule that we wouldn't allow, allow violence against people. You could blow up a tank or you could blow up a flying saucer, but you couldn't blow up people. We felt that that was not good form, and we adhered to that uh, during my tenure. Um, so in the article, they go on to show that that's not actually true, that there were, were other Atari video games that involved violence against people. But I think this is a really interesting to, thing to think about is what is the representation of violence um, really mean? So they're saying there's this sort of, he's drawing this kind of line between uh, killing people versus killing a tank or killing a flying saucer. But it's sort of weird when you think about it, like most likely there's somebody inside of that tank, right? So even though uh, what we're killing or what we're blowing up looks like a box of pixels that looks like a tank instead of a person that that doesn't really change like probably you know what's happening which is that somebody's going to die um, flying saucer we abstracted a little more but theoretically there are aliens who have their own life in the in those flying saucers so um, it's interesting how we kind of separate uh, you know, depictions of violence when, depending on how sort of abstracted they are um, from the, the, you know, violence against people. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and as, as we've mentioned before, uh, you know, video games can also help us to model or think about moral decisions. Um, I think the Fallout one is a very good example. The Undertale one is a very good example. Um, and that's another thing that researchers have studied is, is how can video games actually help us make uh, moral decisions or, uh, you know, behave ethically. Um, I guess I have 
three slides before the end. Okay, so this is the last one before the last discussion. So one more thing that's interesting to think about from the, is another point of view, um, and it's actually by a CUNY uh, professor at Baruch, this book, Warplay, explores the relationship between the US military and video game developers. So you guys have probably heard this, that the military actually puts a lot of money uh, into different uh, game companies and developing different game experiences for a lot of different reasons, for recruiting people into the military, for training, um, and also for treatment of post-traumatic stress disorder. So, um, you know, there's very different conclusions that you might draw from all of those, from those different pieces of information about the relationship between uh, games and violence um, when we think about the different reasons why we might have violence in video games. Um, anyway, all of that is, is different uh, ways of thinking about this, but the question we want to ultimately ask, so this is the last discussion question is, should we use violence in our video games um, as game designers? When we're thinking about a game, is it okay to you know, throw a gun or a sword in the game? Do we want to think about other ways, um, as Jasmine mentioned, like other creative ways of creating the same experience without using violence? Um, and what are the pros and cons of using depictions of violence? So uh, is it, you know, do we, what do we get out of using uh, violence in a game versus what do we lose when we add violence to a game? Um, so this is something I want you guys to think about, you know, not just now, but in general, as you're creating your games, as you're deciding, you know, what to put in the game, how graphic to make your, your drawings or illustrations. Um, but let's take a minute to just discuss it now. Uh, as game designers, thinking about creating a game, um, what do you guys think about adding violence or using violence, using things like blood and guts and, and weapons uh, in games? Is there, is there good reasons to use it or good reasons not? Or um, how do you guys feel about that? Um, if, if like you said, if it helps people's like urges, if it satisfies their urges, then, or like they, they're able to use that to vent more, that could be good. But I think it's neutral. Like I'm, I'm not against it or, or like super, like the thing I said about being more creative, I think it would be. I just said that because I think, um, it would make for more interesting and more unique games. Cause, cause at some point you're kind of doing the same thing, like maybe like repetitiveness, of in every game. So yeah. Okay. So, uh, so I think that's interesting. So generally, you're saying it's neutral. It doesn't really matter if you use violence or not, um, as far as the game experience, but by avoiding violence, sometimes it forces us to be, to come up with new ways to play a game instead of just saying, you know, here's another first person shooter. Um, so I think that's interesting and worth yeah, considering. Yeah, uh, uh, cool. Uh, yeah, can I say something? Um, yeah, but uh, just let's wait. Uh, John had his hand raised, so let's do oh. John and then Hong Tao and then uh, Christine after that. So uh, John, what would, what did you want to say? Um, I think it's, I mean, in my opinion, I think it's cool. Like something that I would definitely want in a game, but um, it, folk, it depends on the group that you're making a game for, because like, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to see if I can make a game with blood. Like, what's your group? Like, what are you trying to, who are you trying to appeal when you're making a game? So I feel like that's what you have to think about before you start, you know, adding guts in blood. <laughs> yeah, I think that's so thinking about the audience. So one of the one of the, you know, pros of uh, using violence is that you might appeal to a certain audience. Um, one of the cons of using violence is that you might uh, exclude a certain audience. So if you want to make a game for kids, you might want not want it to be super graphic or, um, you know, if you want to make a really scary horror game, then obviously it's good to add a lot of violence because you'll you'll get that audience interested. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a good I point, mean, like thinking about who the game is for. Um, just a second, Hakem. Uh, Hung Tao, you, I think, had your hand up next. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just want uh, just want to say that uh, uh, I think games are ultimately a, a toy. No, um, of course, okay. it can be an art, a, a art form too. And a lot of game developers aim to um, create a really polished and uh, uh, artistic, ex expressive game. Um, that's cool. But ultimately, is a is a toy. 
because uh, okay. majority of the game developer they they create game to sell game to make money. Mm-hmm. It's for people to enjoy, and the violence is just one of the easiest way to to make player enjoy the game. Um, okay. it, yeah, I think that uh, this is what I think because if you you want you if you just want to make a game that can sell, you just ha- you just need to create some enemy, give you give player some kind of weapon, and you fight each other. It's I- instantly, you know, you know, easier to create the fun. If you really want to, if you want to create a game that doesn't have violence, you need to, you, you don't have as much as uh, um, references in the past that can help you mm-hmm. to make a good game. Like how many games are you play as a firefighter and you go out and you save save the pe- save people? How many how many games are developing those uh, mechanics where you or you you use a fire axe to break on the break break down the door and you you carry a person out of the house? That kind of uh, gratification that it provides you not many. Um, and I th- I yeah. think I think um, violence in a video game uh, can actually help shape our um, society's morality, um, in a sense. I know it doesn't make much sense, but a lot of games like Fallout, New Vegas, it provides choices. It rewards player by making a, mo- a moral choice. If you yeah. help people, you get rewarded. I think that's a good thing. You have the option to be bad people. You have the options to kill people, and you also have the options to be good people. And if you if your game did a good job to advocate people to um kind of tell people um, to do make good choices. And the, mm-hmm. uh, I think I think that's more helpful for our morality than just simply uh, silence the whole, like uh, simply just um, censor the whole, you know, violent stuff. Because censorship, yeah. you know, is not, it's not gonna change how people think. Uh, I don't know yeah. if you guys know yeah. uh, uh, a book is I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream by Harden uh, Allison, and he made uh, yeah, a game. Yeah, he he made a game uh, that is also called I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream. It doesn't have much violence in it. It's kind of like it's kind of like the Fallout New Vegas without violence. You, you you can make a lot of choice. Um, you can make a lot of choice, and it's gonna affect the story, but you you don't really go out of your way to pick up guns shoot people. Um, yeah. And uh, the game rewards player for making a really uh, for making more uh, moral choices. And if you make yeah. make bad choices, if you do some harmful stuff, it's gonna it's gonna punish you with a bad ending. And I, I, I and and I think that's really gonna help you know uh, people in general to shape our you know morality. I think I think violence if you use if done right is. Is this helpful instead of you know? Yeah. Instead of being a hard wait, wait, I got a quick question for what he said. Okay. Um, like, wait, do you think that um, games where you help people, like, you think those games don't sell well? Is that what you're trying to say? No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that not not many not many de- not as many developers put in their efforts to 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 develop a game where you help people. I don't know if you guys know a game 911 is where you play as a uh, 911 operator. You take phone calls and you dispatch uh, police units, whatever, to help people. Uh, how many games are like that? Not many. But it, uh, yeah, it can like, provide realistically, a, yeah, a, realistically a same as much wise, of uh, uh, gratification. Yeah, you know? realistically wise, I definitely understand that and I agree. But like, you can also add like, you know, superhero video games. They earned a lot and you're helping people. You're not doing anything bad. You right, know? but at the same time, superheroes are also doing violent actions. Yeah. Yeah, but you're not hurting no. innocent people. Like, I mean, the that's the whole game. thing about superheroes, to be honest. I mean, you're not hurting nobody. I mean, if you're an anti-hero, that's a different story. Like, yeah, that's, that's, infamous, my, that's, that's my point. I mean, not if you, infamous, infamous. If you, if you make a game that you use violent downright, if you, if, you help, if you help people telling people that, oh, if you, have, if you do uh, moral stuff, you're going to get rewarded, that, that's, that's more helpful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's my, my two cents. Yeah, we're having well, a, a couple called, uh, things. Uh just no. a second, Haken. Uh right. I think there's a a couple interesting things um in what Hang Tao was talking about. Uh first of all, like the point you made, um I'm just gonna mute. Uh 
about basically like, you know, it was a similar point to what we were talking about as far as like conventions of the platform. But you were sort of saying like, if we just like give the player a weapon and give them enemies to kill, they'll be happy playing the game. And I think that is really interesting to think about um, sort of, again, with the conventions that arise in video games. Um, when we use those conventions, we get all these affordances. And uh, there's probably a reason that those conventions exist. So I think it's interesting to think about it um, from that perspective. And then the moral thing I think is, is a good question because again, it's like if we're depicting violence at, that sort of serves a moral purpose, is that different than depicting violence that serves some sort of amoral purpose? Um, and I think that's kind of an interesting thing to think about. I don't think it's as, as straightforward. Uh, what Hakem was also sort of suggesting is that with superheroes, um, you know, they theoretically are doing something for the good of humanity, but that they're still hurting people. There's still, there's still maybe blood and guts and stuff like that. So um, it's kind of interesting to think about whether that changes the meaning of things. I think with like, one of the things I noticed with Fallout, when after I finished the game, I was watching a lot of videos of other people playing like speed runs and stuff like that. And there was a guy who had played all the Fallout games trying to beat them without ever hurt, without doing anything violent, without using a gun the whole game. And oh, what, one of the things... Run. Yeah. That's, that's so, exactly what I tried to do when I was playing Fallout. Okay, that's what cool. I'm saying. When, well, when so you when, have, when you have, when you give player the options to, when you have the options to be violent or be a good, yeah. uh, or be a good person, make uh, moral choices, when you have the options and you choose to be good, and then I think that there's a more significant in that than, than some yeah. people saying that, oh, we should just ban violence in video game. That's a lazy thinking. If you just ban the stuff, not allow people to experience those stuff, then you're not really changing people. You're just, you're just, that's called censorship. If you have the options to be good and you choose to do that, then that, that's real morality right there. I don't know. I don't know if it makes yeah, I sense. Think, yeah, for sure. I think that's a, that's a, a good point to consider. Um, I do think, so with those Fallout videos, it seemed like it was getting harder as the series progressed to actually win the game. Uh, without using violence. So it was kind of interesting. It was also like a very creative uh, approach to the gameplay, um, trying to, to beat the game like that. Um, uh, anyway, uh, Christine, you had your hand up. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that um, I think like some great examples of games that where like they kind of test your morality is uh, like Telltales where you have to kind of decide mm -hmm. what's the choice you're going to make. Like, I think one of the great ones is like uh, The Walking Dead, where you have to decide if you want to like throw someone off the bus at some point and leave them mm -hmm. to the zombies, or if you want to take them in after they've betrayed you. Like, that's a really great example of like having to test whether you like are going to be humane and take them in or whether you're going to leave them to the zombies. Um, yeah. I also just wanted to say a little off topic from whatever anyone else was saying though i think like violence is kind of important in video games because there are games that uh, are classified as horror games that are depicted as violent but they aren't like uh one of the like one of my favorite games is this really uh indie game called never ending nightmares where it's actually mm -hmm. developed by uh somebody who is he made the game out of his own personal struggles of obsessive compulsive disorder and depression. And it just kind of like gives the viewer an insight to like the world that he goes through and what he sees maybe. Whereas like someone who doesn't mm -hmm. struggle with that wouldn't really understand that, you know? So I just yeah. think like violence sometimes it's, it can be, like you said, it's like a, a weird line to draw because the game is considered a horror game, but it's not, you're never really inflicting any kind of violent violence to someone. So uh -huh. that's all I have to say. Yeah, I think that's interesting. And that, yeah, there's a whole uh, genre of games that deal with empathy. So like putting the, the player in the position of somebody experiencing something, um, which is another thing that is afforded uh, with interactivity and decision making and some of the other stuff that we've talked about with games. So. Um, those are those are good points. Um, so, uh, oh, Hakem, did you have a, another comment? 
Oh yeah, if you want to see a guy that does nothing but um like no gun runs and stuff, you can watch a guy called Stenza. That's what he does that all the time. Mm. There's like pacifist yeah. guns. Yeah. I think I've seen some of his videos, yeah. Um thank you. Um uh Christine. I have one more quick thought. Um another like the no gun run uh i remembered playing dishonored and uh i remember that if you actually don't kill anyone throughout your gameplay you receive like this hidden ending so um i thought it was yeah. just like another great example of like if you were moral and you did your best to be sneaky and not kill anyone you received this reward at the end which was this hidden ending yeah so yeah, I think that's another good example, sort of like Undertale and Fallout as well, where we get these rewards. We were rewarded um, for uh, playing in a certain style that avoids violence. And it is kind of interesting, you know, it's like it's, it makes you kind of choose. Like when I was playing uh, Fallout New Vegas, there was only a lot of parts where I was like, well, it'd be easier just to kill this guy and just move on to the next part. Uh, but if I want to keep my status as, you know, liked in the in this faction or whatever, I have to, I have to be good. Um, so it's kind of interesting how, uh, in some ways, you know, we do it, we have to consider these moral things, not necessarily as like what's good or bad, but what's good for me. What can I, will I get a better outcome uh, if I do this uh, nonviolent thing versus doing um, something violent? So it is, it does model these sort of like ethical and moral issues for us. Um, uh, John. Um, I also think it's possible to make a game violent with actually having the player to do violent things. Like, um, for example, Outlast, you're not really hurting anyone. You're running away from from the danger. You're trying to avoid a confrontation mm -hmm. because you don't want to get, you know, hurt or killed. So there's a way to, like, uh -huh. show the player, like, oh, I can't fight these things because I have to run away, you know, protect myself. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to add that. Yeah, I was kind of hoping thing. somebody would bring Outlast up. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, that's okay. I actually don't. I haven't played that game, so um, I'm not oh, that familiar Outlast with it. But I have to take it. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, really good. It. Um, but I agree because like, and that's what I was trying to say like about horror games. Horror games, you don't inflict violence most of the time you're yeah. running from it because it's being inflicted yeah. to you but you're not doing you're not inflicting violence which isn't necessarily like teaching someone you should be violent in this situation right all right yeah it just shows yeah, that, you're, that's a good that you're scared and you have to you know escape yeah um which may be why it's more uh you know it's it can be good for experiencing those emotions in a safe environment so uh, maybe that's what some of those um, studies were pointing to. Um, cool. Um, so I, I want to take a, a quick look at the, the resources for this, um, just so you guys can see that. And, uh, you know, I encourage you guys to check these out on your own time as well. Um, there's a bunch of stuff here. Um, some of these are more academic studies. Some of them are just articles. There's a, I think there's a video in here. Um, I have to put these in the same tab for them to work. Um, so there's a Harvard study uh, on violent video games and young people, um, which has like a good overview of the literature. Um, um, this is another kind of like overview. This is where that uh, gun violence chart came from. Um, and there's more stuff about uh, you know how to how to look at and interpret video games. This one I think is a YouTube video that's just like kind of a news story that goes into a lot of the the statistics and um, history that we talked about. Um, it's another long term study um, that reviews a bunch of the literature and has some original. Um, analysis as well, that's kind of interesting. Um, another study here, kind of similar stuff, but uh, just different different points of view. 
this is the article that I quoted a couple times that's more of a kind of like cultural history um, on the, this Game Studies website. I don't know if I've showed anything from here before, but it's a really, really good resource um, for more theoretical stuff and a lot of history of games. Um, and this goes into more details about that game death rates that I was talking about, as well as some of the um, legal stuff. Um, uh, this is that one study that I mentioned about uh, racial bias um, in these studies. Uh, and then this is a like a little interview with the author of the um, the Warplay book that I mentioned, uh, who's a CUNY professor. Um, so that's a good one to check out as well. Um, and there's a lot of other stuff, obviously, to to look at on this topic. But those were just some of the resources that I looked at when I was uh, putting this together. So anyway, thanks for um, that was a really uh, interesting discussion. I really appreciated uh, everybody's contributions and examples. There's a lot of games that I wrote down that I'm going to have to check out. Um, so that's going to be fun. Um, so uh, yeah, thank you guys for for that discussion. So um, that actually went a little bit longer than I thought it would. So we only have like 20 minutes left in class, but um, it's okay. We have, we have uh, time outside of class to work on stuff as well. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. Uh, screen recording first.